Today I'm going to show you how to use auto layout and components in Figma to make absolutely incredible prototypes, whether you're working alone or with a team. It's super awesome and I had to make a video. So let's jump into the demo. So today we're going to look at how we use auto layout to create a really nice button that is going to be really flexible for you and really reduce headaches down the road. And then we're going to show you how to turn that button into a component that you can have multiple variants of and share with other people on your team or just in other files that you use. I will say that if you want to use components, that is a paid feature of Figma. You need to have a paid account. Uh, so I actually upgraded to a paid account just to do this demo because it's so awesome. I do it at work, but I wanted to show you kind of on my personal account so I can kind of give you an idea for how it works. With all that out of the way, let's look at how we make a first button. So I want to make a button with these four colors and for these four icons, right? It doesn't really matter, um, but let's just go ahead and create a basic kind of uh, rectangle here. We're going to just make it a pill shaped thing. Uh, control C is a, something you really want to use in Figma. If you have an item selected and you hit Control C, it'll just bring up the eyedropper and you can pick whatever color you want. Really, really nice. But let's do the red one first. Um, and then we're going to pull in this icon, which of course is below everything else. So there we go. Let's bring that in here. Uh, my guides are red and my item is red, so it's going to be hard to see these, but we'll have to deal with it. Um, and we're going to do uh, by Apple, right? And so we're going to put these kind of side by side. We're going to center it in the element. And then I want to make both of these white. So let's just make them both white. There we go. And that's 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 a button, right? It's pretty good. Um, it's it looks like it's pretty well centered. Um, yeah, so that's that's great. So let me go ahead and make sure I have all three of these selected. And what you'd normally do is just hit control or command uh, G to group these into a thing. I'm going to call this button, right? And so now it's all just one big group. I can do whatever I want with. But here's where we're going to make sure we make this awesome, right? One of the problems you have is if you do this is if you want to say like buy uh, an apple now, now you have an issue, right? The text is too long. You have to like go select your background, make it wider, right? And so now it's not quite perfect. And you have to be like, okay, so this is 46 pixels over here. It's 43. I need to align it. It's a whole thing. So what I want to do is just select the button, select the group with a background and then these two items. And I just want to hit the plus button next to auto layout. And you're going to see it's slightly tweaked, but it's basically the same thing. And we have this new section here and some new elements here. But basically, I have perfect spacing now. So if I kind of look over here, I have 43 pixels, 43 pixels, eight and eight, and then there's six pixels between these two. So what I can do now is I can make sure these are just perfect. And you can see kind of these things arranged over here, right? So spacing between items, six pixels, I can grow it. You can actually see the background changes sizes as well when I do that. Uh, what else can I do? Uh, right and left padding, sure. I can make it much smaller. I can make it a little more luxurious. I think that's pretty decent. Um, it's not really important to be exact in this one, but that looks like a reasonable button, right? Um, so, and if I, what's really cool is if I select the text, um, you can see over here, there's these two elements over here. This is for horizontal resizing and vertical resizing. And you're going to see up to three options here. So hug contents means whatever the contents of this are, it's going to be that size uh, for the height or the width, whichever one you're selecting. Um, if you do fixed width, it'll always be exactly this width and fill container will be inside the container. It'll take up as much space as possible. For this one, I just want hug contents. Um, and let me go ahead and change the text. And you can already see, okay, it's reflowing based on, or the whole button is resizing based on whatever I put in here, right? That's awesome. That's already making this much more usable than before. What's really cool is I could also add, maybe I want to add this banana right there. So now it's on the end. Uh, maybe I want it over here. Or I can drag the apple over here, right? You have tons of control over adding other additional items if you want. Like it's it's really pretty great. So let me just rearrange that. That's awesome. Um, a lot of these, if I select the button again, a lot of these settings are assumed. It tries to figure things out um, for you. Um, if I wanted like vertical orientation, I can do that, um, but I want horizontal. Really, really great, really awesome. So now I have a button, right? And so I have kind of some junk text in there. I'm gonna leave that and you'll see why in a second. Um, but this is what I, what I want my button to look like. And I have three more variants that I want to create, right? So I want a yellow one, a green one, a purple one still. So now we need to turn this into a component. And so you can do that with Command Option K, or you can go ahead and right click it and do Create Component. So now it's purple 
and nothing's really changed, right? Like I can still select the text and like all the auto layout stuff is still working as expected. But there's a couple things that I get from this now. Number one, I can publish this uh, and put it in other documents. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but two, over here, you can see I now have properties. So if I hit plus, I can add a couple properties. So I can add a bool, I can add a text, and I can add an instant swap. Instant swap, I'm not an expert in. Um, bool, we're not gonna deal with right now. Text is the one that's relevant here. So um, we're gonna do this. Uh, this property is gonna be called button text. And the value I'm gonna say is uh, by, and actually I'm not gonna do by now, I'm gonna do action um, item, right? So there we go, I've done action item. This, I like when I create components, when I'm creating like UI elements, I like to have something that's, um, I'll do action word, how about actually? There we go, action words, cool. So now it says action words, but it doesn't actually do anything, right? So let me select this text layer and if I go down here to content, you can see here's the gibberish and I can change the gibberish, whatever I'd like, but there's also this button here to add text property. So now I see my button text that I added just a second ago is here, action words. So now I have this property on the button that I can just go ahead and change this to, let's just say action, right? And now it's action and everything's flowed correctly, everything's great, awesome. So let me go ahead and create the other variants. How do I do that? So the easiest way is just to select your component and then hit this button right here, add variant. You can also right click, go to main component and then do add variant, whichever one you prefer. So now we have a second variant and you're also gonna see this section added here called current variant. Uh, so we're going to do this uh, as color and we're gonna do this as yellow. Now I do actually have to go back to this first one and change the color to red. So now I have appropriate names for each one, um, but this one isn't yellow yet. So let me go ahead and bring out the eyedropper, make it yellow, and I wanna pull in the banana. I'm going to delete the apple. And we do have an issue. So the banana is easier to see than the text. So let me just go ahead and change this to black. There we go. We have a yellow button and you kind of just go down the line. So hit the plus. Once you have a, a second variant, you can just add another one to the end of the list. Um, we're gonna go ahead and change that. These guys can both be white now and we'll add one more. This will be the purple one. And we want to select, and white is actually still good there. Um, so I didn't name these. So let me select this one again. This one's gonna be green. This one's going to be purple. Okay. Oh, and I didn't change these, geez. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm just pulling these in. You can kind of see just how quick and easy it is, oops, to change these things. Um, let's go ahead and make this white. Um, if you didn't know, uh, these, you can just put CSS colors, so I'll just put white. That works as well, so just a nice little tip. Um, so we'll get rid of these guys. And so now I have a component called button and there's four variants here, right? Uh, when I gave them names, uh, there's red, yellow, green, and purple. So they're all here and now I can publish my changes. So I'm gonna hit publish on this item. Uh, it's gonna say publish library. If it's your first time doing this, it's gonna just uh, have a slightly different screen. We just say publish um, and it's showing me my changes. So I added a, an element called uh, button. Let's go ahead and publish it. There we go. So now I have this other document here. This is what we looked at earlier when we were kind of clicking this guy. So if I go up here to assets, what you're gonna see is, hey, I have UI over here. If you don't see this, you're gonna have to go to this book icon and you're gonna see libraries that you have, basically any document you've created components in that are shared um, or published, I should say, you're gonna see that here. Just turn this on and you're gonna see, and UI is the name of my document, by the way. Um, you're gonna see these components over here. So I have a button, right? So let me go ahead and just drag this up here, pull in a button, and there's my button. It's kind of big, but it totally works. And so now I'm in this totally separate document. Again, this is a different document. I go over here and I can see, oh, the color is red. How about the yellow one, the purple one, the green one? They're all here and the button text. Let me change that to, uh, yes, they do. There we go. So now we have a button that is sized appropriately. Maybe the green isn't right. Maybe I want red, right? So all that is super easy to do now. So if I'm someone else using this uh, component, I'm able to get all the benefits of um, kind of what I added in this document with the auto layout. So things are gonna be nicely organized and everything. Like it's just awesome. It's really, really convenient. 
Um, once you have a whole bunch of items in your library, it's it gets a little cluttered here. Um, so if you go to this assets set, set, uh, window and you want to just find the ones you want, like you can sort by file, and then you can see there's basic elements, and then there's this one that's just kind of on its own. So what's going on there? Uh, real quick before we go, um, you can see we've got this button that's just kind of out here in free space. If you zoom out, you can see I've got an artboard here called basic elements, um, and that's where my toggle is. Um, if I drag, oops, drag the whole thing over here, let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to um, publish the changes. It just says I modified that, which means I moved it to a different section. When I switch back to assets, yeah, now it's under basic elements. So you could do something like form elements, alerts, like that sort of thing. So you could sort them um, so they're easier to kind of browse this menu and kind of expand to just see the sections you want. But anyway, um, that's something you'll figure out once you have a lot of elements. One last thing, how, did, how the heck <laughs> did I make it so that this guy animates and toggles and is just kind of a really nice thing to have in um, my my document because um, again I didn't have to do anything right if I delete this and I just kind of drag this toggle in let's do nothing um, it still totally works right um, so how does that work so basically I'm using variants right so I have one and then two so this is the first variant uh, I have a and I'm calling them toggle type so there's on and off I'm actually using booleans for that um, but yeah so basically when it's on it looks like this when it's off it looks like this. And I'm using the prototyping system to make it so when, if I expand, when you click on the toggle element, if I click on this arrow, it's going to do on click, change to. So change to is the one you want. Change to, you get to select the variant. So it'll show your variants down here. And there's only one variant, which is variant of toggle off. And then you can do an animation. So you can do instant, you can fade, which is dissolve, or you can do a smart animate. And so there's all of these like linear, which is just move like that. Um, you can do ease in, ease out, all these different ones. You can do a custom. And then there's these bounce ones with gentle, quick, bouncy, and slow. And you can even do a custom one where you totally control the curves yourself um, there. And then you can change some of these things. Like it's crazy how much you can do. Like bouncy is gonna be like that. Um, I just personally like gentle for this one. And 800 is too long, so I'm doing 300. Um, and you basically just do the same thing here. So you take this one, you drag it over to the original one, and it's the same thing. Um, a gentle animation, gentle bounce animation, 300 milliseconds works awesome. And again, at the end of the day, it means you can walk into a demo that you're doing with someone and say, and then you're, they're just going to say, there we go. And there's everything, like everything just kind of works. It's really awesome. So. Hopefully that was helpful in giving you an idea how to get started with auto layout in Figma. Um, there's definitely more you can get into, right? It's like that you could do more variants in these. You could do animations between these, right? It's like we can make it so when you click on red, it turns to yellow and will dissolve in between the two. Why would it? I don't exactly know, <laughs> but we could do that. Um, and then if I go ahead and publish these changes, um, just to see what happens. Um, you'll see in this other document that there's a notification now that my components have been update, updated. So if I dismiss this, everything will stay the same in my document. Nothing is forced to change. But if I do want to get the updated documents or updated components, I can click review. It'll show me what elements are changing. I can go ahead and do that. And then without even like re-rendering anything, I can just go here. And when I click this, it changes to yellow. So Really cool, really nice. Um, just a lot here that I'm barely scratching the surface of, but hopefully this was helpful in kind of showing you what Figma can do um, so you can kind of see if it'll be useful for you. Thank you so much for watching.